Good morning, folks. Welcome, observers. Today, we're going to hit ice changes now and in the past. A galaxy breaking the rules again. New fire sensors on the Earth monitoring satellites and the 2022 Starlink solar storm failures. We're starting with the last 24 hours on our star, where things have stayed pretty quiet. No significant solar flares or filament eruptions. Solar wind and geomagnetic conditions are calm. We do have several sunspots we're watching and plasma filaments too, but they appear to be pretty stable thus far. Can't be more than three weeks away from the Riger cycle uptick though at this point. Likely won't be today, however, as the sunspots may be numerous. They do lack significant size and complexity. Perhaps you recall the 2022 Starlink satellite failure during a minor solar storm. Well, the obvious answer to that event is that the Earth's weaker magnetic field let too much plasma in to work the atmosphere and the satellites themselves, but here they'd rather die than admit that, trying instead to blame the solar terminator UV surge, which takes days, weeks, and did not perfectly line up with the satellite issues. But the solar storm did, and that's what they hope you forget about. This was not the slight UV bump of the Terminator. This was the solar storm amplified by Earth's weakening magnetic field. It was a nice try, though. Folks, the new fire sensors on satellites are pretty incredible. They can pick out literally everything you'd want to see from total burn area to structures at risk to hot spots. Link is below and they are already using this high detailed data to manage the disasters. Up next, a quick note about yet another galaxy that appears to lack dark matter. Right now, astronomers are largely stuck at trying to figure out why some galaxies appear to have it and some don't, but at no point have they asked what is different about those galaxies to give them a reduced spin and cohesiveness profile. Lastly, folks, kind of a notes from Ben's head thing. First of all, I'd like to quickly answer the title question. Uh, because we are 12,000 years into an interglacial warm period and we're lucky to still have any glaciers at all. Now the more interesting of the two is this one, how major ice loss can change how the crust moves. While that exact paradigm isn't what I'm clapping for, the general concept is, and I agree, during the events of Earth where the ice changes the most and most rapidly, so does the appearance of the world after significant crustal disruptions. It's just that something tells me my version of that is a bit more extreme than theirs. Folks, this weekend we kick off the major schedule at Observer Ranch. Grand opening, then astrophotography class next week. Kings of Catastrophe weekend after that. Lots of pole shift conferences and prepper days. And any way people stay at campgrounds, we will make work for you. Hope to see you at one of our events this summer. We'd love to shake your hand. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow right here but right now it's 5 30 a.m in the new valley of the sun eyes open no fear be safe everyone